So lichens. Lichens are our last group that contains Ascomycota in them. Lichens are very strange organisms. You notice that there is no division name here. Yeah, lichens don't fit into any of the classical divisions. They don't even really fit into a kingdom because lichens are kind of like Euglena. They're hybrid organisms. They're symbiotic organisms. So a lichen is a symbiosis between an alga and a fungus. The alga makes up about 7% of the lichen, the fungus makes up about 93% of the lichen, and the fungus is mostly, almost always, an ascomycota. Which is why we do them now. Sometimes, not as commonly, it's a member of the Basidiomycota. So in the structure of the lichen, we like to say, determines the structure, I mean the structure of the fungus determines the structure of the lichen, because there's so much fungus there. But if you separate the lichen and the fungus, and in some cases you can do that, it looks nothing like, the lichen looks nothing like, sorry, the fungus looks nothing like the lichen. So grown alone, the fungus and the lichens look completely different. The fungus looks like a typical member of the ascomycota. The alga, this is usually a unicellular, well it's always a unicellular, green, or blue-green, namely a bacteria, alga. So it's a unicellular alga. Grown alone, if you culture it alone, looks like a unicellular alga, divides mainly by mitosis. The fungus looks like a typical member of the ascomycota. So something really unusual is happening here because the lichens look like neither of these. Here are some lichens growing on a rock. This is a, there's a number of different types of lichens. These are called crustose lichens because they grow as crusts. And so all of this fantastic color here on this rock, this is all lichen. All lichens. They're not all this colorful. These are really exceptional photograph for the variety of lichens and the colors. So they can grow in really remarkable places. They in fact have hyphae that can grow inside the rocks. The hyphae of the lichens can penetrate these rocks and so some of the crustose lichens are endolytic. Endo inside lithos rock. So endolytic lichens. Show you how that happens here in a second when we look at the structure of lichens. Here's a different kind of a lichen. This is called a folios. We have the English word foliage, which means leaf-like, so a folios lichen looks like leaves. Now, not exactly like higher plant leaves, but you see why they're called folios. They have a flat, this flat shape. They're not growing completely flat with the substrate. Crustose lichen doesn't have any three-dimensional structure. The folios lichen has a little bit of three-dimensional structure, a little bit of leaf-like structure. And the third one, which I don't have a drawing of here, I'll show you a picture of it later, is down here. This is a fruticose. Fruti fruity means shrub. So a shrub like three-dimensional lichen. So here's the crustose. Folios, and the fruticose, three-dimensional lichens. They all have the same kind of basic structure. On the crustose lichen, there's a upper cortex, then an algal layer, this, and the central medulla with these 
hyphae that run down into the substrate. And that substrate, as I say, can be rock, and those hyphae can actually penetrate into there. And in fact, they can penetrate so deep, and the crustose lichen can be so thin that essentially the algal layer is even incorporated in the rock. You can get those things off only by scraping away rock. The foliose lichen's got the same idea here, upper cortex, algal layer, medulla, but now there's a lower cortex also. So that the bottom looks a lot like the top. It looks even more like the top than it shows in this diagram. I'll show you a picture. Foliose lichens are exactly the same, except now it's three-dimensional. So we have to think of this as cylindrical. So it's three-dimensional. Those things run all the way around. Folios again, very aptly named. Lichen, it's kind of got the blue-green color because the chlorophyll is masked a little bit by the presence of the lichen. Here's a fruticose. This is called reindeer moss. It's a very common lichen in the northern parts of the country. This is taken in Upper Michigan when I was a graduate student. Just a field of fruticose lichens. This is British soldiers. Again, this is fruticose. Called British soldiers because of the red caps on them. And these red caps, now this is the first time we have seen the reproductive structures. That red area, those are apothecia of the fungus. And that brings us to a very important point, and that is that the fungus and the alga reproduce separately. There is one kind of reproduction that they have together, a kind of fragmentation, where they reproduce together. But let's leave that aside for a second. In general, they're reproducing both sexually and asexually independently of each other. They at least can. And so when we see sexual reproduction, it's the sexual reproduction here of the fungus. The alga is not involved in the formation of those little caps here. Those are apothecia. Funny able to give because they're not cup shaped, they're inverted, they're dome shaped instead of cup shaped, but still, same thing. Here's another three dimensional fruticose lichen. And again, here is a more typical apothecium. And you can see other apothecia throughout that fruticose lichen. Okay, here's the structure of the lichen. What color is going to work good here? That works pretty good. Cortex on the top. Cortex on the bottom. You see it looks just like the top. Algal layer. So these blue dots here, these are the algae. And then the medulla, which is hyphal. Just the hyphae are there. Of the... So that's pretty amazing. I mean, you've got that whole center part of this lichen that's composed of fungus, and yet this doesn't look like a fungus. It's really an amazing organism because it's not an organism. It's this symbiotic association between there. Now, what's the symbiotic association, where it's a, whether it's a case of mutualism, where they're really getting both benefit, or whether it's just the fungus parasitizing that alga, I think is not completely clear. And in fact, it, can it probably can change 
during different parts of the lichen's life cycle and between different species of lichen. There can be asexual reproduction of the whole lichen. And this is essentially by a kind of fragmentation. Now, fragmentation, of course, could just be the breaking up of the lichen, the same kind of fragmentation we've been talking about. But now there is a special kind of fragmentation where these little bits of lichen, that is, little bits of fungus with associated parts of algae can get broken out of the, of the lichen. And these little bits are called soridia. Soridia, sorid means heap. So a little heap of lichen, a little bit of fungus with alga. And by the way, there is a technical term. Of course, there's a technical term for the fungus and the alga. Alga. The fungus is called the mycobiont, and the alga is called the phycobiont. And I think you know all the roots there. Pretty self-explanatory. So the two partners are the mycobiont and the phycobiont. This diagram shows sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction of the fungus. So this is only of the fungus, both sides. This is asexual. This is sexual. We've seen sexual reproduction in Ascomycota before, so there's really nothing new here. So we here we have ascospores. These are prophecies. Prophecies over here, ascospores over here. Very strange ascospores on the right side, but still ascospores. So typical Ascomycota reproduction. This thing. Remember the name of these things in the Ascomycota? These produce, those are conidia. If we were to look down here, we would see our conidia fours. And this thing, this whole thing is called, that's what I thought. It's the hard one, pycnidia, little dense. And it looks kind of dense compared to the rest of that lichen there. Pycnidia on the singular, so it's a pycnidium, little dense. So typical reproduction for those two. Here is a pycnidium in a lichen. And you can find, and I'm going to let you find, and label all the different layers. They're pretty easy here of this lichen, namely the upper and lower cortex and algal layer, the algal staining red. Here is the reproduction of the ascomycote, or the mycobiont. I'm going to say mycobiont, sexual reproduction. It's an apothecium. So this is essentially an apothecium there. The only difference between this apothecium and the apothecium that occurs in the ascomycota is that this one can be perennial. Perennial means throughout the year, and these things can last more than one year. They can continually reproduce ascospores out for several years, whereas in the ascomycota, the apothecium is formed, it sheds its ascospores, and it degenerates. So they can be, can be perennial. 
otherwise exactly the same. And we have it again here, a little closer up in apothecium. And again, you can find the different layers here. Here are the alga cells. And closer again, I think this is our last slide, we have the ascus. And if you look carefully, there would be parentheses. And of course, very nice algal layers here, elaborate algal layers. So in lab, you can find out if you're liking these things as much as I do.